Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I am excited for this podcast. This is going to be something radically different than anything I've done before. This is actually a panel of women, and we're talking about pageants, <laughs> which I have to say, I had a very strong preconceived notion going into this interview and just love the women sharing their journey and what it means in such a positive way. And each one of the women that you get to listen to is very, very strong in business. And you definitely hear that come across and they talk about the reason why pageants mean something to them. So enjoy this podcast. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Uh Hi, welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures (laughs) podcast. We're doing something new today. We're doing a panel. So I have Jen, Jamie, and Christina. And as you can see, they are pageant women. (laughs) Did I say that wrong, right? Um, I thought it would be really fun to chat with them and talk a little bit about, I guess, maybe the preconceived notions of the pageant person, right? Um, And I want to start out by saying I wanted to do this because they are all an excuse my language, but badass women (laughs) and business owners and very, very successful business owners. And um, I just thought it'd be super fun to talk about, you know, pageants and why and what has it meant to you and, and each of your platforms too, I think would be really cool. So I believe that we should start with you. (laughs) Let's just just talk about a pageant. So explain how did you end up in a pageant? You know, why, right? So last year was my first year ever competing in a pageant. Um, I knew nothing about pageants and I'm typically the girl that's in like leggings or like car hearts out ice fishing or you know the one usually getting dirty or playing in the mud or things of that nature not so what you think of when you think of a pageant what you think of. Yeah, <laughs> makeup i'm still working on learning how to apply makeup even to like today yeah. so everything i had to learn and i'm still learning um it's just been such a fun journey i just had a calling to participate in a pageant and i didn't know why and I kept ignoring this gut feeling and calling. And as you know, entrepreneurs, I'm sure you all know, listen to your gut, right? That's what we say. Listen to your gut feeling. And I kept ignoring it. And so finally I turned to my husband and I said, you know, I think I'm going to participate in a pageant. (laughs) And his response was why? (laughs) And then he laughed. (laughs) And, um, I was like, so you're going to support me on this journey and we're going to do this. And it's just been so much fun. I've met amazing women. You know, I have two of them sitting beside me today and there's a great sisterhood, um, of just network of these women who just want what's best for their community and their country and representing their community and their state and their country. It's just been amazing. Yeah. You're a little bit different in that you, beauty has been like a thing for you in your life. You've been on screen, you've Mm -hmm. modeled. Yeah. So pageantry probably seemed a little bit more coming from Carhartts (laughs) and (laughs) ice fishing, right? Just a little bit. Uh, yeah. How did you end up? How did you end up doing pageantry? Well, so, um, it, it actually turned out one of the former directors, um, she just reached out to me and she's like, Hey, you know, you have great style. You really carry yourself with poise. You should participate in this pageant. Um, and like, so something to note about me and my journey at that time, I was still recovering from, uh, the abuse that I had had at, from a former relationship. And so I was like, you know, I don't know that I could put myself out there again like that. I really don't like, I was afraid, you know, and that I was going to be found and all this stuff. And we tend to have like a lot of that, like imposter syndrome, you know, like I'm not worthy. And so therefore I don't want to do that. So it was a little bit different because when I told my husband, like, uh, this lady just reached out to me and said I should do a pageant. And he was like, dude, you should totally do it. And I was like, 
no, that's the wrong answer. You're supposed to tell me why I shouldn't do it. <laughs> and he was like, babe, you're beautiful. You carry yourself well. You should totally do it. And even my daughters were like, yeah, mom, you should do it. You should totally do it. And so there I was, um, I was a size 16. I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this. And I was like, I, I don't know guys. I don't know. Um, and it was such a vote of confidence. And the reason why I'm addicted now, and I'm like, this is like my fourth time participating. <laughs> um, but one of the judges came up to me after, and I mean, I felt, you know, body image is such a big thing, especially pageantry, modeling, acting, all of that stuff. I'm never going to be a size zero ever. Um, I'm always going to be, you know, busty, curvy, all of the things. Um, and so one of the uh, pageant judges, he is a very, um, I don't want to say discriminating, but he is just very, um, selective when it comes to picking mm -hmm. even the girls for his own pageant. And so he came up to me after the pageant and he said, Hey, I want you to know that you shouldn't give up on this. And I was like, what? And he goes, you got that spark. You have what it takes to um, win a pageant, you just need to work on your body a little bit more. And most people were offended for me when I said that, but I was like, no, like he's right. I do have to work on my body. Um, and so I just, you know, started becoming healthier and eating better and working out. And so now it's just, but staying you, yeah, like of course, curvy and you and the beautiful you that yep. you are. Right. I think sometimes when, and I have this constant thing in my head with my daughters because I have two daughters and they're built very differently than oh, me. Yeah. And I want them to be healthy. Like they're beautiful and I want them to be healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, and you're also different. Like I love this. You're all in different colors. <laughs> you're all different colors. <laughs> Your hair is different. <laughs> so Jamie recruited you. Yeah, yeah. So we, I went to an event and, um, the minute Jamie walked in the door, she just had this confidence about herself. And I'm always at events trying to meet someone new that I don't know or trying to, you know, network, right? And so that was the first thing I said to her. I said, gosh, this dress is just stunning on you and the color is beautiful. And we got to talking and little did I know she was actually one of the featured speakers at the event. And I was just attracted to her personality from when she walked in and she was talking about pageants and I thought pageants is not at all what I thought I was going to hear about tonight, you know? <laughs> and so I just said, let's grab lunch. And we talked about it. And I think sometimes as women and moms and business owners, we lose ourselves a little bit, you know, we put on the work hat, we put on the mom hat, but there's never really that time for you. And I did used to model many, many moons ago, but you know, looking at what I look like then and what I look like now, I thought, oh gosh, I could never be in a pageant. And Jamie said, that's the exact reason you should. Mm -hmm. It's to show women that it, there isn't one size and shape in pageantry. And then we went to a dinner and I met Christina and she just encouraged the journey. So here I am. So I'm the first timer. So I haven't actually competed in the pageant yet, just a current title holder with these beautiful women and they're guiding me through the journey, which I'm really excited about. So let's start with, um, what do you want people to know? I mean, I think we touched on a little bit of it, but if you were talking to a younger you or a woman that would be like, Oh no, 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 no. What, what would you say about being in a pageant? What is it? What is it brought to life for you? And let's start with Christina. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to do a pageant when I was like 18 years old. I was like, yeah, I would watch Miss America and, you know, Miss USA and Miss Universe. And I mean, well, first of all, there was a lot of Latinas becoming Miss Universe. So I was like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Done. Um, but I didn't have the right body type, you know, and then I got married super young. And so I'm like, I'm definitely never being a miss. Like that's that we're out, like we're done. I'm never going to do that. So having this opportunity now as a missus, and then not only that, but like being able to encourage and represent, you know, the married woman and, and to be able to, um, promote healthy marriages and such. I think that's such a blessing, not only to us, but you know, to the contestants, but also to other people that are watching us because our husbands really do 
a lot um, for us. My husband, I got to tell you, he's, he is so over this. I mean, he loves me <laughs> and he's like, do what makes you happy. But, you know, can we like, you know, contract out somebody to take you? <laughs> No, <laughs> um, but he's 100% proud of me and, you know, um, yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's, it's been a blessing for me. Yeah. Jamie, what would you say if you were to add, you know, someone were to say why? Um, I would say be ready to be the change that you wish to see in the world. Um, there's no like one set person or type or body figure or shade or hairstyle that is the winning hairstyle or the winning complexion or the winning dress. It's all about who you are and what you represent as a person. Um, like Christina shared, you know, it's an honor to represent married women within the state of Idaho and then represent the country. And then, you know, competing on an international stage at Mrs. World, which is where this journey would end um, once you win state and then Mrs. America and then Mrs. World. Um, just know that you're enough. Mm -hmm. Know that you're enough the way you are. You don't need to dye your hair. You don't need to straighten your hair. You don't need to, I mean, spray tans help. Just because the lights <laughs> okay. like wash you out a little bit. I was going to say, I need to dye I my mean. hair. <laughs> Let's be honest. I need to dye. You may not need to dye your hair, but you I need not need to, to dye your hair. Your hair is beautiful. Um, and there's like tips and tricks about being on stage. Oh, uh, oh yes. Can we please talk about? Just say it, just because I want you to say it. Oh come on. All right. So last year, being my first year competing, there was a lot I had to learn, and I'm still learning a lot about being in pageants. And one of the things that I was, um, I don't say like the most, uh, it was most eye opening to me is that there is this this thing called butt glue that you you use in pageants <laughs> and yep. um, I had no idea what butt glue was um, and <laughs> It's I had not no what idea. you think. Yeah. <laughs> and I had no idea how it would come off <laughs> either. Uh, so butt glue is typically what gymnasts use. Um, and in pageant world, we use it to um, apply it to our our hind quarters. Derriere. <laughs> Derriere. <laughs> our tush. And um, we then apply our swimsuit to it to ensure that our swimsuit does not reveal too much while we're walking on stage. So it keeps the swimsuit in place while we're in front of people and on, on camera. <laughs> and um, to take it off, you have to use baby wipes. And in the excitement of changing backstage and, you know, you've got your sisters on either side of you, you've got your sisters behind you and they're getting ready and they're trying to switch out of their swimsuit into evening gown. And your, your sister across the, the fitting, the, the changing room is like, I need wet wipes. I can't get the butt glue off. So you just take your wet wipes and you just chuck them behind you and you hope that she catches it. And she does because we got to be out in the evening gown in just a few seconds. <laughs> and this is why I need sisters to guide me on this journey because I didn't know what that was. <laughs> There we have butt glue. Butt there glue. is the terminology. You need like a terminology yeah. sheet. Oh yeah, yeah. There's so there's so much. I mean, when you start, it's a rabbit hole. Yeah. It's it really is because when when you go down it, like you got butt glue, butt glue, and you've got you know all sorts of different things that people use to present themselves in the best light. You know, uh, boob tape. Yes. That one that one was one of my favorites too. <laughs> boob tape for everything. <laughs> um, yeah, it's <laughs> moleskin because you're you know you're practicing dress rehearsals and dancing in high heels, you're practicing opening number, you're making sure that your shoes aren't gonna slip, do not wear oil, because then you're gonna slide in your shoes, and if you touch the stage, then now the stage is like then you're gonna destroy an oil your slick. Friend. Yes, <laughs> yes, you will likely it slip and fall. A times. It did, yes. <laughs> so it's, there's just little, little tips and tricks, but really truly just knowing that you are enough the way you are and loving mm -hmm. yourself first yeah. and that shows that's where your energy that's where your your light comes from and that's what shines on stage and i also think to that point each of you have a different platform that you're running on and for me um listening to you talk about that is also where that light turns on for me, like this is pretty cool because you get to bring awareness to something that's very meaningful, right? So um, do you want to share your platforms? Do you want to start, Jen? Sure. Um, 
I'm running on Start Them Young. And during the pandemic, what I learned in having two, um, well, I have an elementary schooler and a middle schooler, was their emotional health. Um, they, I was seeing signs of depression because everything shut down. And for my kids, um, sports has always been such an outlet. So my older daughter loves softball. My younger daughter loves gymnastics and cheer. And I don't think about it. I just sign them up for things. And there's a lot of people that they don't have the income necessary for that. And so when um, my husband and I have been working on doing different fundraising things to help fund and give scholarships so that, you know, that child who really wants to play softball or who really wants to go to the cheer camp can go. Um, and secondly, volunteering was always really big for our family, you know, with organizations like Feed My Starving Children and um, just having them participate in those things young. And during the pandemic, all of that shut down. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about how that affected those that were in need of those services. And so just getting kids volunteer or getting them, um, getting kids involved in those volunteer opportunities is really important because my kids even missed that. And I just see them, you know, and these different opportunities that they have to volunteer and to give back and just how it changes them. And I think it's important because, you know, it's kind of cliche, but they are our future. Mm -hmm. And we need to teach our own children how to give back in their communities. And so Start Them Young is really about getting them started in programs, outlets, whether it's music, whether it's sports, arts, but then also having them teaching them how to give back to their own community versus just expecting everything, which we I see love, that today. So. I love that. It's so powerful. I, um, I was actually listening to your podcast a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that he said in the podcast was your children remember the things that you praise them for. So praise them for the right things. Mm -hmm. And in the volunteering, I think if it's something that's a priority at any place in their life, right? If you're, if you're making a priority and praising them for it, it's something that will always be a part of their life and such a powerful thing. So, yeah. Yeah. You want to share, you kind of shared yours, but you want to go? Sure. Um, so my platform is, well, last year's platform was unity in the community. And this year I've kind of shifted it a little bit and still kind of fine tweaking it. But in this moment, I am, uh, be the change. And, you know, being the change we wish to see in the world and that no one else is going to do it. So when you see something that you want done, do it. Because if you keep waiting for someone else to do it, it's not going to be done. And for me, um, that was, there was not a woman of color. There's yet to be a woman of color that has held the title as Mrs. Idaho America um, within the state of Idaho, obviously. It's, it's Mrs. Idaho America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that, you know, if I keep saying, man, I wish somebody would really do that. I, I really wish someone would do that. It'd be really cool if someone did that. Well, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, oh, oh wait, it starts it's with you. Me. <laughs> oh, I'm a married woman of color and I can, <laughs> I can be that change and let generations know that they are enough. The curl of their hair, the curve of their body, the melanin in their skin, it's enough to carry the crown and the legacy as Mrs. Idaho America. And, you know, just, just to love yourself through that. And with my platform of being the change, uh, I'm hosting a blood drive on February 14th um, at the Boise Senior Center from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then that evening, we'll have Illuminate the Night, which is when Treasure Valley first responders drive around the block of St. Luke's Children's Hospital with the intention of sending love to the kids in the hospital so they know that they are loved and not forgotten on Valentine's Day. That's so and, sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun being able to just get out into the community and have a platform to stand on, even just wearing the sash. It's like my, my cape. <laughs> it feels like almost like, you know, you're putting it on. It's like, I'm ready to take on the world kind of thing. And, you know, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's, it's not. It's cool because it goes back to exactly what you started out with, which is going with your gut, like actually listening to your internal voice saying, right? It's pretty powerful. What is, I don't know that I know what yours is. <laughs> well, mine is, I'm still fine tuning it um, as far as like how, you know, concise it can be, but really it's just about follow your dreams. Um, for me, it's super important to um, 
know that there are other options for people out there and not just people, but women and minorities as well. Um, the American dream is like huge. And especially as an immigrant for me, like being able to own property, being able to own my own business and to run my own business, that's like a huge deal for me. Um, growing up in an entrepreneurial family, of course. And so, um, one of the biggest things, um, that, or one of the biggest opportunities I think is, you know, um, all these women in, uh, Elmore County who own their own businesses, but also we have a ton of minority owned businesses as well. So working with the Idaho women's business center, um, and working with the Idaho Hispanic chamber of commerce. Yeah. And working with, you know, organizations that do more to give resources to these underserved communities, but also to these underserved entrepreneurs, um, and business owners. Um, I just think it's super important for us. Um, I think that is definitely, you know, owning my own business, running my own business is what has allowed me to not only do fun things like pageantry and travel and that sort of thing, but it's also what has allowed me to give back to the community. Um, I'm with Jennifer, like, um, sports have been so instrumental to my own kids, um, soccer and whatnot. So because of how awesome we did last year, we were able to give quite a substantial gift to one of our local, um, soccer clubs so that they in turn could turn around and give sponsorships to kids that come from, you know, single income families or come from single parent families. And so I think that is so important. And of course, I mean, yeah, I would love, I, I would love to see, um, someone with our melanin <laughs> <laughs> wear the crown, um, and not necessarily a tan. <laughs> I think that would be so awesome, but really, I mean, any woman can do it. You know, I, I think as I long think as you guys are all represented. Yeah. If you set your mind to it, you know, um, Napoleon Hill used to say, if you, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. And I'm, I'm on point with that for sure. And that's the cool part of this journey is when you come into it, you're almost like, so am I trying to win or what? But as we were sitting here, it's like, you want it so bad for your sash sisters. As I've learned <laughs> yeah. that's a term, like, you know, you want to see them win. I mean, yes, we're all obviously competing, but it becomes more about the platform and the purpose of why you're competing. And, you know, you just want to support each other. And I remember you telling me how you were just as happy when you were standing next to when Absolutely. the winner was announced. It's like, you don't have this feeling of, Oh, was it wasn't me, but you're cheering so hard for those that you're running with. Well, I'm cheering for all of your platforms. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's such a powerful, it's such a powerful thing. And I think the ability to use it to bring awareness, as I know you all will, is a really I, I now love pageantry <laughs> for that reason alone, <laughs> aside from the fact that I <laughs> like all of you, but yeah, it's such a cool thing. So, so just in kind of wrapping up, is there anything, you know, we talked about the pageant world. What, is there anything that I didn't ask that you're thinking, oh, this would be really cool for someone that's listening to hear this about, about the journey in the pageant or the, just the process of it? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a, I just wanted to touch upon it. I know I'm always the downer, right? I don't try to be the downer. I really don't. But sometimes it's just reality because I know that there's going to be the little girl that's going to be sitting or, you know, that's going to be watching us or even the mom that's going to be watching us. That's going to say, Oh, I could never do that. My friends are going to ridicule me. You know, my husband's going to be like, what, like, are you kidding me right now? You know, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of misconceptions around, uh, pageantry and like, you know, it's only a bunch of dumb bimbos. I hate to say, I hate to even use that word, but I mean, as you can see, I mean, it's po very powerful, intelligent, successful women who just want to make a difference in their worlds. Um, and so, um, if that is you, if you're watching right now and you're like, man, I really wish that I would have done a pageant, you know, when I was younger or man, I would really love to do a pageant now, if that's you and you feel it in your heart, like, don't let anybody stop you from that. There's so many misconceptions exceptions. And honestly, just follow your heart, follow your dreams. Um, there will be a sister here for you who will guide you and protect you and love on you. Um, and just want what is best for you. And so I just encourage you to, to go for it.
Yeah, I'm not saying anything. (laughs) 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 Thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome.